Um, it was December 23rd, 2023, when he gave me this word. And um, a little bit of revision was added on December 30th, 2023. And I'm going to go ahead and read it, read it out just as he gave it to me. Okay. The word for 2024, unity, purging, and prayer. I heard the Lord say, there are things coming in 2024 that many might find shocking. That many might find shocking. And the verse that he gave me was Psalms 2.1. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? And I might repeat just so it will sink in. Again, this is a written word. There are many things coming in 2024 that many might find shocking. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? Psalms 2, 1. I heard the Lord say, my believers are to keep oil in their lamps. Keep their lamps burning. Someone type that in the chat. Keep my lamp burning. I heard the Lord say, my believers are to keep oil in their lamps. Keep their lamps burning. Hallelujah. Keep your lamp burning in 2024. This is not the year to let the oil run out of your lamp. Keep your lamps burning. Matthew 25, 1 through 3 and 5 through 13 says, then the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. They took no oil with them. Keep the oil. Hallelujah. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all of those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was shut. Afterwards, the, the other 10 versions came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you neither know the day nor the hour. Keep your lamps burning. Keep oil. My believers or are to keep oil in their lamps. Hello, hello, hello. It's Ariel Harrison. Welcome to my channel where the gospel is preached. People are reached. We are spirit led and the fire of God spreads today is a late night conversation. We are talking um, all things really what's going on in the world today. We're going to talk about the Mark Driscoll situation, um, potential war, World War Three going on between Israel and Iran, the Middle East, as well as this Dubai rain that's going on and just some thoughts that, um, you know, looking a little bit at scripture, but really we're just talking as you hop on, let me know where you are watching from. Hello, Ernest blessings. Please share the broadcast, share the broadcast with your network. Um, again, we are talking current events, if you will, there's a lot going on in the earth right now. And it seems like 2024 has been a full packed year and it's only what it's the fourth month. But so much has happened already. 
And uh, I played that bit from that prophetic word that the Lord gave me because um, a lot of what he said is, is, is manifesting, especially things are going to happen this year that many will find shocking. Um, but for us as believers, come on, we're not scared, right? The Bible says, watch and pray. We're supposed to look for the times and the seasons as believers. It's not for us to be afraid, guys. It's just not. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So really, if you are a believer in this time, you should be full of joy, love, excitement, because listen, we are in a different kingdom. The, the, the rules and the, you know, whatever is going on in the world, that's one thing, but we are of a, another citizenship. Our citizenship is in heaven. Come on. There aren't any recessions in heaven. <laughs> there aren't any famines in heaven. Come on. And so we are ambassadors for Christ. You know how the apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So come on. A lot, what I'm talking about tonight, some of, you know, it might seem like, but come on, we have the Lord. We have, you know, we have the Holy Spirit. We're walking with him. As you're hopping on, let me know who you are and where you're watching from. Let's have a conversation today. My husband let me know that uh, Dubai was getting some rain. And I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, yeah, they're, they're getting rain. So let's look at this. Apparently, Dubai, Dubai is underwater. Thanks, Ernest, in the chat from YouTube. Share the broadcast. Let me know where you're watching from. Let's look at this video here. Hello, Static 2000, oh, Columbus, Ohio. Hello, hello. Hello, Linda. Linda Branch from New Jersey. Did you feel that earthquake that went on last week? I almost put that in the title. I was going to say, you know, World War III, Dubai rain, Mark Driscoll situation, and, and uh, earthquake in New York. Did you feel it, Linda? What were you experiencing when that happened? All right, share screen. Let's go here. South Africa. Hello, Adrian. All right. What's going on in Dubai? Hit by a year's worth of rainfall in one day. Did you guys see that? Let me play this again. Not the boats. Oh my gosh. How do you like where do you even have a boat? Like if you're in Dubai, like do you you know, like they just had a boat ready in their house. <laughs> that's that's something. Not a time left. Wow. Uh, it's the boat. It's the boat right here. It's the boat. <laughs> there were quite a few prophets. I saw some words at, at the beginning of the year that were mentioning there would be some extreme weather patterns this year. I know Dr. Faith prophesied that. Um, let's see. Linda Branch says she thought her house was blowing up. I'm so gl I'm glad you're safe and sound Linda I can only imagine what that was like especially for an area that does not get earthquakes often so I have um like hi Liddell in Paris Texas Francis you are in Dubai are you experiencing this rain right now Francis like what's going on yeah like again <laughs> after that eclipse I had a lot of people, you know, I was seeing people saying the eclipse is just something that happens all the time. Nothing's happening different. Um, but it just seems like there has been a shift post eclipse. It, it just feels like a shift. Um, I'm, I'm just feeling that. I don't know if any of you have felt that as well or seen it, but something took place during that eclipse. I don't know the details, but, um, 
Yeah, Francis, what's going on in Dubai? <laughs> Enough water in one day. That normally is the amount of water that they would get in an entire year. That is definitely something. That is definitely something. You can't, you know, you can't ignore that. Wow. I want to read here in, it makes me think about um, Matthew 24. And I've been reading this a lot, to be honest. Um, when Jesus is talking about signs of his return and some of the things that he said um, are things that we're experiencing now, but I love what Jesus said. He's like, don't be afraid. Uh, the, the believers wanted to know, like, what are the signs of the end times? I believe his disciples were asking him this. And Jesus said, watch out that no one deceives you for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. And he says, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. So even as we are looking and seeing like this Israel situation, this Iran situation, this Ukraine situation, this Russia situation, you know, as believers, we aren't to be alarmed, but we need to be watchful. We need to be watchful. Um, such things must happen, but the end is still to come. It says nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginnings of the birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and to be put to death. And you will be hated by nations because of me. Come on as Christians. Hello, unique. Um, he's saying you, you're going to be hated as believers the closer we get to the return, that persecution is going to ramp up. And like, I'm grateful to be able to come on YouTube and Facebook and be able to talk about Jesus and preach the gospel. I'm not taking that for granted, but according to the word of God, persecution for Christians, persecution for people standing in faith and believing in Jesus is going to ramp up. Right. And so we've got to be prepared but we also have to be people that are full of the spirit. This, come on guys, this is not a season to be a lukewarm, passive believer. This is a season, come on, what a great time to be alive. This is a season to be on fire for the Lord, to have oil on your lamps, to be living a holy life. Come on, people don't like to talk about holiness, but holiness, where you see it in the word of God, it often connects directly to your connection and your proximity to the Lord and to his glory. We want to be a holy people. Come on. They that dwell under the shadow of the most high. We want to be under the shadow of the almighty. We want to be in proximity. We want to walk closely with the Holy spirit. We want to live holy lives. There's protection in that place, right? Um, there's a lot going on in the world today. Conyers GA. Awesome. Come on in the chat. Let me know what's going on. Also share the broadcast. Iran or Iran. Let's look here. The situation between Israel and Iran is, is definitely one to be praying about. It's definitely one to be watching because the things that we are looking at with our lie with our eyes, this is literally historical stuff going on. Uh, we are living history and we are living Bible prophecy. Uh, let's look here. These missiles, ballistic missiles and drones toward Israel, raising concerns about broader conflict in the Middle East six months after Hamas attacked Israel. Israeli, American and other... Oh. This is showing that night, I believe it was April 14th or April 15th, when Iran sent all of those missiles to Israel and the Iron Dome was, you know, shooting them out of the air. America was assisting Israel in protecting the country. But the sky, as you can see from this video, it was being lit up. It almost looked like a video game. And... um I'm, I'm grateful that there was protection from the people, the innocent people of the country, right? To, that those missiles didn't land on them. But we're definitely, 
anytime things is anytime there's activity going on in the Middle East between Israel, I believe the believers across the world. Hello, Mikhail Thomas. Hello, Miss Juanita Snow. Today we're just chatting. This isn't really a like Bible teaching. We're just talking about some current events. But anytime there's things happening in the Middle East, I believe all the Christians kind of turn and we are watching because we know what the Bible says. We know biblical prophecy is going to be fulfilled and we're watching. Um, there is this thing about the red heifers. Um, the people in Israel are trying to you know, sacrifice these heifers so they can re rebuild the temple. It's just, it's a lot going on. So our eyes, a lot of eyes are on the Middle East right now, the Holy Land. Um, but also, let's see, hello, Warren Gills. But also this isn't, you know, this isn't just where you're just watching. Like we have to, as believers, we have to be praying as well, you know, because when wars and when countries are at war, there are always the innocent bystanders, the civilians, the people of those countries, right? The souls that Jesus once saved. There are souls in uh, the Gaza that Jesus once saved. There are souls in Israel that God wants to save. There are souls in Iran, right? And so sometimes we can be so caught up into the political, the political wars going on, but there are people on the ground real life people, people that Jesus died for, that his blood was shed for. And so I, I, you know, I encourage all of us be interceding and praying for the people to know Jesus, to meet Jesus, to have encounters with Jesus. There have been so many stories of even Muslim people in Iran having encounters of Jesus in their dreams and, and coming to salvation. So, you know, it's a time for the church in America and the believers in all other parts. I know there's someone on from Dubai. We just need to be prayerful. Amen. We need to be prayerful during this time. The Bible says the prayer of a righteous person availeth much. And I know it can seem like, oh, I can't do anything. There's so much happening. It's just me. But you can always pray. You can always pray. I just talked to someone today. And she said she and her kids took a moment to pray for the children on the Gaza or in the Gaza Strip. And um, while she was praying, the presence of God hit her. And we can always pray as believers. Sometimes, sometimes we feel like our prayers are ineffective or, you know, it's not enough, but it's the least that we can do. We can pray for these situations going on. Yeah. Yeah. Let me add this back. And then this is what's going on in the Gaza Strip. It's it's really devastating. Come on, who who in the chat is saying I am going to I'm going to pray? Is there anybody in the chat that's saying, "Hey, I might not be I might not be in the Middle East. I might not be anywhere that any of these things is going on, but I am saying I will be praying and I will be um, pressing into the heart of the Father for salvation, for protection for these people. Yep, Mikhail says we need to be praying and fasting. This is what the Bible said. It is what it said, guys. It's to the point to where like secular people your Joe Rogans or your, you know, Russell Brands, they're starting to talk about Jesus because the word of God is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. Um, like, share, um, like, and share the broadcast. Be sure to subscribe. I'm going to pray for these people tonight. Hey, have faith, brothers. I will be praying. Yeah, it's what we can do. And also what we also can do, we can pray, but we can also share the gospel because, the time is becoming short and people need Jesus. And you might feel like, oh, who am I? But you're somebody that's been saved and redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And you have a testimony. So come on, you guys. We can also share our testimonies and share our faith. Amen. Let's see, Dubai underwater. And then, you know, this is the eclipse. There were people that said, you know, this eclipse isn't nothing. 
it didn't settle right when I was hearing that because I was like, nah, no, nah, this is, there's something prophetic going on with this uh, eclipse. So let's read up on it a little bit. Um, I'm playing producer and host. So if I'm pausing, it's because I'm clicking a video. Unique said, I will be praying. Yep, let's pray, guys. What's left of the 2024 solar eclipse lives in our hearts. That is that eclipse that took place on, what was that, April 8th? Stunning. A total eclipse of the sun as seen from Indiana on April 8th, 2024. That's powerful. That's beautiful. Where I live, I did not get a total eclipse. I just got a partial eclipse. It was partial, but we have to pray and I'm going to be praying. Thank you, Warrenetta. I agree. We do. All right. Um, I'm making sure I talked about everything I said I would talk about. This is different for me, you guys. I'm used to just teaching. So thank you for hanging out with me. <laughs> this is literally just hanging out, but it's good to do. All right, the Mark Driscoll situation. If you haven't watched it, I posted a video about this already on my channel. Um, you can see my thoughts there. But I wanted to look at it again because there was a little bit more that I was thinking and I wanted to flesh out a little bit more from this men's conference with Mark Driscoll. Uh, if I share this here. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and follow. J Film says, I like this live. What about everyone else? <laughs> All right, here it is, guys. So background, uh, Mark Driscoll is a man of God. This is a conference at a church with another man of God. Um, and this was the opening act for that conference. But let me do this. Um so the opening act is playing at the bottom of the screen. Yeah. I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm hoarse is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened for you. <laughs> and I want to be very careful with this and it's not what I want to say, but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an ashram. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. In front of that, was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend. Our God is humble. He descends. And then he swallowed a sword and Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 
agree, you may not agree with him, but we are brothers in Christ, and there's a right way to handle this. Yeah, so I played the whole video. Um, it's, what happened was there was an opening act. In the opening act, there was a sword swallower who has a background as a stripper. And he did a performance. And you saw the performance right there at the bottom. The performance was very seductive. The performance was not appropriate. And um, if you want to see my first commentary of that, you can watch my video. Uh, the video is on my page and it's titled, you know, Mark Driscoll kicked out of the men's conference. But basically, Mark Driscoll is discerning this thing and seeing this is like a Jezebel spirit on stage. Because as people, we're led by spirits. As believers, we're led by the Holy Spirit. And as you listen to music, if you watch TV shows, you can see the ruling spirit behind things, right? If you watch a show, you can see like, okay, this show is full of lust. I, I, okay. Or this, this show is full of violence or whatever. You can see it. So anyone with discernment that looked at that act saw like there was some lust going on with that act. It was, there was something off about it. It wasn't appropriate for the conference. That's evident. Um, I, a lot of commentary was like, whoever vetted this guy, how did this even happen? Um, and so Mark basically rebuked, you know, he didn't rebuke it, but he just was saying this was a Jezebel spirit. It was inappropriate. And so the pastor that's over the conference kicks him off stage. And so this whole thing has gone viral. This whole thing has really blown up. And I think it's interesting that it has gone viral. Um, I don't want to hate on the man on the pole, right? Because he was doing his job and needs Jesus, right? <laughs> so it's not, it's not necessarily his fault, but the people that put him there in the first place, that's kind of, it's like, you know, what's going on? Where's the discernment? Uh, a lot of people were saying Mark shouldn't have said it publicly, but honestly, the thing happened publicly. You address it publicly, you know? Um, it's just, it's, it's like stewarding, stewarding the, stewarding the crowd that you have. So he got kicked off of stage static because he was explaining that the pole swallower, the man that swallowed the sword was being, um, was led by a Jezebel spirit, basically that it was demonic. And the pastor obviously didn't agree and didn't like the way that he addressed the audience and kicked him off the stage. Um, they later had a, you know, a re, you know, they came back together. But for me, it's a matter of everyone saw it. And when you gather people and when you have influence, you just got to take care of God's people. And if you made a mistake by bringing someone on that was operating with a spirit, obviously that was not God's spirit. You just got to own up to it and just got to say, you know, someone dropped the ball. We're sorry. And I didn't see that. I, I have yet to see an actual apology from the man that was over the conference. My, you know, straight off watching it, I agree with what Mark Driscoll said. And I actually agree with what he did. Um, some people say, you know, he didn't Matthew 18 it. Matthew 18 is a scripture that says, if you have an offense against your brother, you go to them directly. So if I have an offense against Kathy, I'm not going to try to go to Janice to tell Janice what Kathy did, I should go directly to Kathy. But in this situation, I find it different because what happened was on a stage in front of thousands of people. So it wasn't like an individual offense. Um, no, nope, it was not a video that he was presenting static. It was playing what happened. So he was addressing what happened underneath him. He wasn't playing the video, if that makes sense. Um, that's a really good question. So I really feel like God is using this situation to bring about an exposure to the, to the body of Christ. But I also feel like it's raising up more people to see that we got to be holy. <laughs> Holiness is so much on God's heart right now. The Bible says, be you holy for I am holy. And I don't think anyone looking at that performance when they looked at it, I don't think that they 
saw or or were drawn closer to the holiness of God. <laughs> I don't think as they watched that, that they felt like, oh, I feel like Jesus is being glorified from this performance. And if you are on the stage leading men to God, I think what you're doing should be glorifying to Jesus. What he was doing was definitely glorifying something else. Um, and so God is really, it, he's shining light on this situation. I think in a way of validating what happened with Mark Driscoll, I think also in a way of saying what we as a people want and need are strong believers who will stand on truth. And I feel like that is what the Bible, the body of Christ is craving. People that are strong, people that are willing to say the truth and not be afraid, especially in this age of, you know, political correctness in this age of using my correct pronouns and I'm offended and my truth. It's like people have become so soft, but there's a boldness. Come on. There's a boldness that I believe that the body of Christ is craving right now and needs um, and so I think what Mark was doing on that stage was so bold that a lot of people are gravitating to the boldness of it. Cause it was obviously something wrong, but oftentimes people let wrong things slide because of their buddy, buddy, like, oh, I'm friends with this pastor. So I'm not going to address it cause we're friends, but it was something refreshing to see him address it and to see him, you know, take the backlash. And so, you know virality has sided with Mark Driscoll. And I don't think either one of these men are bad men. Like, you know, I think they're both men of God that have made massive impact for the kingdom of God. And so, you know, it's not a dishonoring thing, but it's just one of those things of like, you know, sometimes if you're wrong, you just got to say you're wrong. And um, my personal opinion, knowing that life is spiritual and that we are in the physical realm, but there is a spiritual realm, I think there was um, an enemy. I think somewhere the enemy got in on that conference in order for him to be so openly platformed. There was some compromise somewhere. There was some gatekeeper that didn't do, there was something that happened. Um, and we're human, you know, static says that wasn't bold. That was something that he was supposed to do. I mean, in this day and age, it is bold. You know, he got kicked off of stage, you know, and he, he got embarrassed. And so that was bold. It, it was. It really was. The man on the pole was being used by the devil. Yeah, it didn't look it didn't look godly to me. I yeah. Mm -mm. And so it's unfortunate. But I think at the same time, I think God is using this situation, even the conversation to say, like, as as believers, we've got to be set apart. We've got to be holy. We've got to look different. We got to sound different. We got to act different. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things of the world. You know, we're, we're of another kingdom. There's a holiness to the believer. And so, yeah, holiness <laughs> and repentance. Wow. Wow. Static, uh, let's see here. Mikkel said, that was something else. I'm so glad you posted it. If we can't see what is going on, something is wrong. The devil knows Jesus is coming real soon. So he's showing his head. That was so demonic. I mean, I just love that Jesus is more powerful. I also had this to say. Um, I believe that um, Pastor Mark was being led by the Holy Spirit. And I wanted to say this about how the Holy Spirit will lead you to do things. He will lead you to do things that you don't understand the full implication of. My personal opinion, I don't, I don't think that either one of those pastors knew how big this story would become. But I know the Holy Spirit knew. And um, I really feel like Mark was being led by the Holy Spirit. And um, he has a way of doing what he wants. And... Um, and it's not always what you can comprehend with your mind, if that makes sense. Um, but it's definitely, like I said, this story is speaking to the country right now. And people are talking about what is right 
in the house of God and not right. People are talking about holiness. People are talking about the Jezebel spirit. People are talking about temptation. And it's a conversation that I think is good. It's a conversation that I think is good. I think people are being unified as much as it's like, oh, this isn't a great thing to unify over. You know, it, it's questioning like what spirit is. And when I do things, what spirit am I doing them with? Am I, am I being led by the Holy Spirit? What spirit is leading me? And um, it's powerful. It's really powerful. All right. Anything else? I have my husband on the couch over here. I asked him to come on. He said not today. So if y'all want my husband to come on again, y'all should say, come on, Mr. Harrison. What you say, babe? <laughs> He's funny, y'all. I love this man. Um, yeah. Let's get it, guys. Let's be about our father's business. Um, if you are watching this and you don't know where you will spend eternity, you don't know what will happen if you were to pass away right now, lights out. I want you to listen, tune in. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, the righteous. This is not a time to not know where you're going to spend eternity. This is a time to be secure in your walk, in your faith with God. Salvation comes through belief in Jesus Christ, the repentance of sin, and confessing him as Lord. And I believe if you're on and you don't know where you're going to spend eternity, you don't know if you are saved, if you're going to heaven or hell, I think God brought you here for a reason. In fact, I know he brought you here for a reason. I want you to pray this prayer with me with sincerity of heart. You can say, Father, I know I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus, save me. Be my Lord and Savior. Break every demonic covenant off of my life and baptize me with your Holy Spirit and fire. If you prayed that prayer, type in the chat, type, I just got saved. I just got saved. I love it. And if you gave your life to Christ either on the replay or right now on, um, on live, I want to invite you to come here and download this book. It's titled, I'm Saved Now What? I wrote it just for you guys to um, be able to get some next steps. Here's the book right here on my link tree. Download it. Answer the questions. And you will get that book in your inbox and you will be invited to a new believers class. Listen, that new believers class is tailored to you. I've gotten a chance to minister to people during the class and it has been powerful. So be sure to download that book and I will see you in class the next time we have it. Amen. As always, these are the ways to give. And I will see you guys tomorrow for morning prayer. You know what we say, Jesus preached, people reached, spirit led, fire spread. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. It's been different, but I appreciate it all the same. See you tomorrow for morning prayer. Love you with the love of Christ. God bless you. Good night.